The baby's cries echoed, bouncing off the trees as his stepmother placed him on the stump in the forest. The boy watched through tearful eyes as the woman backed away slowly, disappearing up the path. Anna and Leon Davis had married young, and while the relationship had been happy at first, it began to sour after a few years. Anna, excited to pursue her career, would come home late or spend numerous days away on business trips. This meant that Leon, who worked remotely, would often be left alone for an extended period of time. The man understood that his wife was determined to build a career. However, all he wanted was a family of his own. Leon didn't care how much money they had, and after one of Anna's business trips ended, he begged his wife to sit down and talk with him. To his surprise, she readily agreed, and the pair sat at the kitchen table. At first, everything went well. Anna announced that she was up for a new promotion, and Leon was happy for her. After congratulating his wife, the conversation turned to Leon missing his wife. He attempted to express his concern, telling the woman that, while he understood, he would like to spend more time with her. The man's wife was open to the idea at first, until Leon brought up his desire to have children. Most of their friends already had kids, and the man would have loved to have someone to keep him company while Anna was away. Leon also secretly hoped that having a baby would encourage his wife to settle down a bit, but the man's hopes were quickly dashed. His wife grew upset, saying that she wasn't ready to have kids, and certainly not with someone who didn't support her or her career. Her husband attempted to argue his case and defend himself. However, after an hour-long fight, the man packed his suitcase and headed off to a hotel to spend the night. The couple had fought before, but never like this, and Leon thought it would be better to give Anna some space. The next day, Leon headed home, eager to make up for the fight. He entered the house, calling out for Anna hesitantly. No answer came as he walked into the kitchen. As soon as he entered, the man noticed a white piece of paper taped to the fridge. Anna had gone to Florida, claiming that after their fight, she had decided to take a last-minute trip before heading back out on business. She would be gone for a while, and Leon sighed softly as he sat back down at the table. As the day wore on, Leon found that he could not abide being in the house anymore. The man had no work to do for his employer, and the deafening silence of the empty house was more than he could bear. Grabbing his keys, wallet, and phone, he headed back out to see if perhaps he could find something to distract himself. There wasn't much to do in the area, and it wasn't long before Leon found himself at the local bar. The man took a seat at the counter and ordered a drink, sipping it slowly as he looked around the room. Most of the guests were men, especially at this time of the day. Leon was about to return to his drink when he saw a woman approaching him. The woman was dressed in a waitress outfit, carrying a small tray as she approached the counter. The man watched in fascination as she scooped up another set of drinks, her long blonde hair flowing behind her as she walked away towards the next table. It wasn't long before Leon found himself ordering another drink, eager to invent a reason to remain there, sneaking looks at the waitress. It was almost an hour later when the woman turned around abruptly. The man was caught off guard and he ducked quickly, spilling his drink in his haste. The woman let out a soft laugh, coming over and pulling some napkins out of her pocket. He took them happily, and the pair struck up a conversation as Leon cleaned himself up. It seemed as if the waitress's name was Natalie. She had moved here from her hometown to go to college. After she graduated, however, she found that she had fallen in love with the town and remained behind to start her life there. The two of them struck up a conversation as she helped the man clean up. Leon wasn't intending to do anything other than perhaps make a new friend. The man had been lonely without his wife around, and he asked Natalie if she would join him for drinks after her shift. Natalie, who was also in need of some friends, readily agreed, and as soon as her shift was over she joined Leon at the bar. The pair talked and laughed long into the night, and after some time, the bartender was forced to cut both of them off. Neither was in any condition to drive, and if he was being honest with himself, Leon wasn't ready to go back to his cold and empty home. As the waitress stumbled up out of her seat, he reached an arm to steady her, calmly suggesting they could call an Uber. The woman nodded, but then her face fell as she admitted that she may not be able to get into the apartment she shared with her roommate. She had forgotten her keys that morning and would have to be buzzed in. Unfortunately, at this hour, the other woman was most likely asleep. At this revelation, Leon suggested that perhaps they could both head to his house instead. 
He assured Natalie that he had a guest room she could stay in for the night, and that it wouldn't be any trouble. Eager to get out of the overly crowded bar, which was beginning to give her a headache, the waitress agreed, and the pair ended up outside of Leon's home less than an hour later. As soon as they entered, the man found himself relaxing at having another person fill up the space. Natalie wasn't tired, and suggested that perhaps they could watch a movie or something until they were asleep. Happy to have another person to spend time with, the man agreed, and the pair found themselves on the sofa watching a romantic comedy he had previously planned to watch with Anna. As the night wore on, both of them could feel the walls between them slowly coming together, and before they knew it, the duo found themselves sharing the guest room bed. It wasn't until the next morning, after waking up to a pounding headache, that Leon realized what had happened. Whether it was the alcohol in his system or the loneliness driving his actions was unclear, but what the man did know was that he had cheated on Anna. While he felt guilty, the man also felt a growing sense of comfort, one that only grew when he heard Natalie moving around upstairs as he started making breakfast for the pair of them. This was the way he had always pictured his life, and after some awkward conversations with the waitress, the pair ended up spending more and more time together while Anna was away. Leon knew he would have to tell his wife when she came home and vowed to do just that. Unfortunately, the woman's trip was unexpectedly cut short. She arrived home a week earlier than planned. Aside from the occasional phone call, Anna rarely kept in touch when she was away. It came as a great shock to her when she arrived home to see that her husband was gone and that there was an assortment of women's clothing scattered around the house. Anna knew she had not been a perfect wife but she had never expected her husband to see another woman behind her back. Filled with anger, she called her husband, intending to get some answers. The phone went straight to voicemail, and the woman tossed it onto the bed, determined to give the man a piece of her mind when he arrived home. Leon's arrival came almost two hours later, after he had dropped Natalie off for her shift at the bar. As soon as he entered the home, he could hear footsteps on the stairs, and he found himself face to face with his angry wife. The woman accused him of cheating on her, and Leon couldn't deny it. All he could do was apologize while saying he had intended to tell her. The pair argued late into the night, and eventually the man packed his bags once more, heading to a hotel after leaving his wedding ring on the kitchen table. Anna watched him leave, her fury at being cheated growing inside her chest. While he felt guilty about cheating on his wife, Leon was forced to admit that being with Natalie was the happiest he'd ever felt. The woman in question ended up in his hotel room after her shift that night. Natalie was harboring a secret of her own. The woman had been feeling poorly, and after going to the doctor, she discovered that she was pregnant with his child. At this news, the man knew what he had to do. Anna was his wife, but he had a responsibility to do right by Natalie now as well. The next day, he headed to a lawyer, and within a few months, he and his ex-wife were divorced. It was decided that Anna would keep the house while Leon used half of the alimony money to purchase a small home for his girlfriend and child. While Leon was settling into family life, his ex-wife found herself struggling for the first time. Without her husband around to look after the house, as well as the additional money his salary provided, the woman found herself unable to take the long business trips she loved. This led to many nights spent at the very same bar where her husband had gone astray. And just six months after the divorce, Anna found herself passed over for the promotion she'd worked so hard for. Unable to keep up with the mortgage on their home, the woman moved back in with her mother, 45 minutes away from where her ex-husband and his girlfriend now lived. Despite Anna's struggles, her former husband had no such issues, and he and Natalie welcomed their son just a few months later. The boy was his parents' pride and joy, and Leon could not have adjusted better to becoming a father. This was everything he'd ever wanted, and he regretted not being able to have it with Anna. It seemed as if Leon had finally gotten his happily ever after until he got a phone call from the local hospital, and his world came crashing down. A storm had come in that morning. Leon urged Natalie to stay home while he was at his new office job, but the woman decided to make a trip for much-needed supplies in case the power went out, as it often did during this type of weather. Loading Jeremy into the car, she set off, planning to make it there and back before Leon could arrive home again. A strong wind began to kick up, and before anyone could react, one of the older trees, which had been damaged in the last storm, fell. Natalie never stood a chance. 
As soon as the man arrived at the hospital, he was informed that his girlfriend had passed away. His son had survived with only minor injuries thanks to having been placed in his safety seat on the opposite side of the car. While he was devastated at the loss of his new partner, the man knew he had to remain strong for Jeremy. When Natalie's funeral was over and the man found himself alone again, he decided to return to working from home to be there for his child. Leon was determined to shower the boy with affection and attention to make up for the sudden and unexpected loss of his mother. On his days off, the man would often find himself out doing father-son activities with Jeremy. Sometimes he took a walk through the park with his six-month-old son. During one of these outings, the man encountered someone he'd never thought he would see again, which completely turned his life upside down once more. Anna, who'd been taking her mother's dog for a walk, would stroll through the park as well. On this day, she was about to head home when she walked right into a man pushing a baby carriage. Angry at almost being knocked over, the woman was about to shout at the man when the sight of his face stopped the words in her throat. The pair stared at each other awkwardly before Leon began making small talk to break up the tense atmosphere. Neither had been around anyone for some time, and the conversation just flowed easily between them. It wasn't long before Leon disclosed the news of his girlfriend's unexpected passing, and Anna's heart leapt. The woman had been determined to get her revenge, and now with the mistress out of the way, she could finally see an opening. Anna suggested that perhaps they could spend some time together as friends. She realized now how Leon felt about loneliness, and that it would be nice for Jeremy to have a woman present in his life during this critical time. While the man was distrustful of his ex-wife, he would do anything to ensure his son's happiness. A few weeks passed, and the pair would often meet for coffee or walks in the park. However, to Anna's dismay, Leon only had eyes for his son. The man barely paid her any attention, and never left the boy alone with her for more than a few minutes. If she was going to get her revenge, she needed a plan. The chance for revenge came just a week after Jeremy turned eight months old. Leon was called to an important meeting online and could not take the baby to a previously scheduled doctor's appointment. At first, the man simply planned to reschedule the meeting, but at Anna's insistence, he decided to allow her to take his son instead. Leon reasoned that since Anna had never been abusive towards him other than the verbal fights, he could trust her with the baby for a couple of hours. To ensure the baby boy's safety, however, the man discreetly attached an air tag to the inside of Jeremy's onesie before kissing his baby goodbye, as his ex-wife carried him out the door. If something did happen, the man would always know where his son was. He felt comforted by this and sat down at his laptop, unaware that the next few hours would be the most terrifying of his life. As soon as Anna was out of the house, she loaded the baby into her car. The woman was ready to put her treacherous plan into action, and instead of getting onto the freeway, she headed towards the old abandoned campgrounds instead. The woman was still angry at being pushed to the side and was determined to make the man suffer for it. What better way than by getting rid of the boy who had now consumed Leon's life? The woman glared at the now fussy baby in her arms as her face twisted in malice. No one would ever find the child out here and she felt a tiny trace of satisfaction as she laid the boy on a stump, well off the path. Anna hurried back through the woods. She had been planning on leaving after getting her revenge, knowing that it would only be a matter of time before Leon reported her. The woman drove off in a cloud of dust, and that would be the last anyone saw of her until the police arrested her two days later, hiding in a motel in the next state over. Meanwhile, baby Jeremy had now begun to cry after realizing he was all alone, and it was the sound of these cries that lured a rather unexpected group of visitors to his location. The baby's cries cut off as a series of howls began to echo in the clearing, and the child's eyes widened as a furry nose poked into the side of his blanket. Unbeknownst to the local rangers in the area, a pack of wolves had decided to seek shelter in the area. The boy let out a small giggle of delight as his fear faded, reaching for the furry face in front of him. Across town, however, the baby's father was freaking out. The doctor had called an hour ago to say that his ex-wife and son had never arrived at the appointment. As soon as he heard this, the man attempted to call Anna, but a recorded message informed him the number was no longer in service. Desperate for answers, the man pulled up the tracking device he had placed in his son's clothing. 
The small dot on his phone informed him that the device was located in a patch of woods just off the main highway, several miles away from the clinic they were supposed to be going to. Leon felt his heart miss a beat, and fearing the worst, he made a desperate call to local law enforcement, hurriedly explaining the situation. It was several hours after he'd last seen his son that the police launched a search party. The man, feeling sick, waited at the station for any news of his precious son. The police had already informed him that they were looking for Anna, but that was of little comfort to the grief-stricken father. While Leon was at the station awaiting news, one of the senior officers was out combing the now darkened woods with a flashlight and radio. He had seen quite a few missing child cases over the years, but none involving a child this young. With the temperature rapidly dropping, it was a complicated and already dangerous situation. The woods were infested with all kinds of wildlife, sometimes even dangerous predators. Any of these could easily harm the child, assuming of course that the baby was even out here in the first place. The man's ex-wife could have easily found and dumped the tracking device, allowing her to escape as they went on a wild goose chase. After an hour passed, the officer was about to give up and turn back when he heard something echoing through the trees. It was a soft whimpering sound, like a child would make. The man hurried to radio in his location, racing forward towards the source of the noise. As soon as he burst into the clearing, the man froze in shock and awe at the unbelievable sight before him. There, lying on the ground, surrounded by four large wolves, was baby Jeremy. The boy was cooing happily as one of the animals licked his face while the others sat up, raising their ears in response to the sudden intrusion. The man quickly radioed again, warning the others to approach carefully as he backed against a nearby tree. The wolves didn't seem to be harming the child, however the same might not be true for him. The wolves in question had been by the baby's side for hours, their instinct to protect their cubs leading to the group adopting the baby. As the sun went down and the temperature fell, the pack took turns keeping the baby warm, as well as fending off any predators who might do him harm. Jeremy cooed again, and the largest wolf, who had been nuzzling the baby when the officer arrived, raised his head to face the man, almost studying him as the minutes stretched into hours. The officer remained frozen as he could hear his fellow searchers approaching. He was about to call out when the wolf sniffed the air, letting out a quiet howl before nuzzling the baby one last time. The boy let out a giggle, and the wolf slipped away into the darkness, watching from the shadows as the baby was taken away to be with his kind. After paramedics cleared the baby, Leon was reunited with his son. Thanks to the unbelievable efforts of the pack of wolves, the baby was happy, healthy, and safe. What did you think of this amazing story? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Join us for another incredible video soon. Until next time.